Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about the Golang language. And today we're going to talk about slices as promised in the last video. So we have seen uh, what arrays are. And so we have seen that arrays are basically collections of elements of the same type. And these elements of the same type are basically stored contiguously in memory. This means that each basically memory cell that stores a value, the next one will be the next value of the array. So they will be stored one next to each other in memory. Uh, but now we're interested in slices. Uh, why? Well, because in the last video we've seen that arrays are actually static in size, meaning that when, when we declare an array, uh, for example, R, um, an array of three integers, well, then we cannot add any more elements. The array that we declared is an array of three integers, and that's it. There's no way to uh, increase the size of this array dynamically. That's why in a lot of cases, and if you've come maybe from some, some other language, maybe a more high-level abstracted language like, I don't know, JavaScript or Python, um, you, mi you, you, you might be you use collections of data that uh, naturally, without you worrying about anything, already grow in size. Or maybe if you come from a language with no a garbage collection and where you actually have to do the mem memory management yourself, like in C, uh, then you might be used to using, you know, these functions like malloc, calloc. Well, well here in Golang, Golang takes care of... Um, of the basically of the allocation dy dynamic allocation of memory but we, instead of using arrays we will have to use slices so if you come from c again you can think of slices as just you know calloced or slash malloced uh, arrays uh, where then each time we add a new element we basically realloc them to store more elements and then we add a new element at the top but if you do not come from c then do not worry about it and slices are basically just arrays that grow dynamically in size, meaning that slices are just like arrays, collection of elements of the same type, but if we want to add new elements, we can do that basically. And so let's start by seeing how we can declare a slice. So to declare a slice, we using the var keyword uh, and just declare it without initializing it, we just use var, then we call for example slice1, and then we use as before the square brackets, but this time we write nothing in them. And basically, we don't specify its size. Uh, by doing this, uh, basically, we're telling the compiler this is not an array because I'm not, I'm not telling you a, a a specified size. This is a slice. So let's try to print out to the console the slice we created. As you can see, we get an empty slice. In fact, Golang. Uh, just like with other data types, because now you should know that basically if you just initialize a boolean value and you print it out, meaning that it has no value, then Golang automatically sets equal to a to false. As well as for integers, the automatic value gets set to is zero. In this case, arrays and slices will just get set to an empty array or slice, respectively. Then I'll see how to uh, declare that. But what about initializing? So what if we want to also tell the compiler what we want to set it equal to? Uh, and well, to do that, we can do it in many ways. One way is to use slice literal syntax. And just like with arrays, we can basically just write um, the square braces again, then string, and then inside of here we can write the elements. For example, we want to say, um, I don't know, like, hello, then how are you, maybe. And then we can now try to print again. Let's see what we get we get the following uh, slice printed out to the console. As you can see also, by printing slices to the console in Golang, you just get out the uh, this, these curly braces with inside the elements of the slice. You can also create slices from an array, and this is called uh, array slicing. So we're gonna do it up here, creating slices from array via slicing. So let's uh, declare an array. And also notice that here, just with, like with other data types, you can just um, basically type in for your variable using the, as you can see, this uh, colon equal operators. And as you can see, this will work again because it just inferred the types. It's just the compiler deduced from the right-hand side that slice one is a slice data type. And also, now let's go and see how we can create slices from array. So let's first declare an array, maybe an array of three integers, uh, actually five integers, let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's set it equal to the following, for example. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Well, let's now set a slice equal to array. And to create a slice from an array, by slicing an array, we basically need to slice the array starting from an index and ending to an index. In the following way, we will basically say uh, slice colon equals uh, the name of our array 
um, actually here is the name of our slice just to specify maybe be more precise and then we need to specify here the start index and notice that in our slicing we will include the start index inside the new slice we will create and then the end index so in this case suppose that we want to create a slice containing 10 20 and 30 well to do that we will basically just do uh, array 0 going up to 3 why because the end index will not be included so we need to specify one index after it and uh, when we will do that let's uh, try and actually let's print um, slice one uh, slice instead of slice one let's see what happens as you can see we got 10 20 and 30 but what we got here is not a um it's not an array it is a slice so we can try to convince ourselves of this by printing out the type of um slice variable let's see what we get as you can see we get a slice of integers and so this should convince you that this is a slice and so this is another way of creating slices now notice that we want to, to, to basically get an array containing 10 20 and 30 so basically starts from the beginning well in this cases we can just omit the starting index and as you can see the code will still work and because basically if we omit the starting index it just means start from zero in the same way if we want to create an array starting from the index 2 up to the end we can just omit the last index and we will get all the elements after it as you can see so this is our some other um, you could say notational things that you should know about uh, array slicing to create slices and now we're gonna see a last way to create a slice and that is using the make uh, the make function so actually let's delete these lines of code here and so by creating so with the make function actually uh, so how can we do that well we will just create a the name of the variable in this case maybe let's call it s1 or actually slice one to be actually just slice then we will use the colon equals operator to make a type infer from the right hand side you could just declare a slice but it, it might be a little bit more time consuming so we're just gonna stick with this and then we're gonna use make and then inside of here, we want we will specify uh, the that we want a slice, for example, of integers. It could be as well of strings, of boolean values, whatever you want. Let's do integers here for an example. And then we will specify the length of the slice. Notice that here, of course, the length is not fixed, meaning that if we add new elements, we will see how we can add new elements to a slice. Uh, we will basically we can increase the uh, length. Let's see, set it equal to 7, for example. Now, let's uh, printing out the slide is again not initialized. It will print out a slice of zeros. In fact, we can try that. As you can see, we will get all zeros. Uh, and now I'll show you something. I'll show that just like we did with arrays, that we can access and change the values at certain indexes. And also, we start to count from zero. Remember about that. Also, here we can do that. And in fact, by. We can just. Um, like for example let's just add some elements to it so like this um, oops okay and then here too and let's see and now let's try to print it out as you can see we get our slice with the elements we added so um, but there's one difference now instead uh, of what we've seen with with uh, arrays that the uh, basically the length of the array was static here we can add new elements how can we do that we will use the append function and so notice that the append function will not change the slice we have but rather it will just return a new slice with a, a new value at the end so how can we uh, so in order to basically change our array we need to reassign it to the append function of the slice so imagine that we want to add, and notice that with the append function, we can add as many elements as we want. Um, so how can we do that? We will just specify as the first argument, the slice to which we want to append the values. And now suppose we want to append eight, nine, and 10 to, basic, to complete basically our counting of numbers up to 10. Then we will just specify the values that we want to add. And now let's try to print the slice out. As you can see, we get one, two, three, up to 10. So this is how you use the append function. This is basically how you can add new elements to a slice. Now, now that we have seen this, uh, seen this, 
we all need to specify some more things about uh, slices, and these are the length and the capacity. So uh, you're probably already familiar with the concept of length of an array, uh, but also slices, of course, can have a length. But with slices being dynamically allocated, they also have a concept of capacity. And in short, a very high-level view of, these, of both of these things is that the length of a slice is the number of elements inside of it, whereas the capacity, also used with the cap function, is basically the memory capacity. Uh, so how, the, the values it can store, it can potentially store. So let's try to print both of these out in the console. So example length of slice and then cap of slice, and let's see what we get. As you can see, we get 10 and 14. That's because 10 is the length. As you can see, our slice contains uh, 10 elements, but the capacity is 14, meaning that the total number of integer values that, they can, that this slice can store as of now is 14. Now let's try to add other values. Let's see how the capacity also changes. So for example, let's add 11, 12, 13, 14, for example. And let's see now. Oh, sorry, let's add another one. I forgot to, I should have added also 15. As you can see, the capacity uh, raises. And now we have 16 as capacity. Uh, but the length, again, is just the number of elements that we have. And as you can see in this case, now it became 15. Well, now that we have seen how to declare slices, initialize slices, work with them, change elements inside of them, um, append new values, and all, all these things, let's now uh, focus on something else. And that is, how can we compare slices? Because we have seen that in Golang, you can compare data types. You can compare Boolean values, you, you can compare integers, you can say 10 is, um, if, if you say, for example, 10 is equal to 23, this will yield false, 10 is equal to 10, this will yield true, you can say 10 is bigger than 23. So how can we also compare slices? For example, how can we say that two slices are equal? Because ideally, uh, intuitively, you would say that uh, this slice here should be equal to another slice like this. But in Golang, you cannot just directly have, for example, a slice and say that it's equal to slice one. In fact, let's actually try to do that and convince yourself that that is the case. For example, let's declare slice, uh, slice one. This time let's do strings, and just to change a little bit. So string, and let's, uh, for example, uh, hello, uh, hi. And then slice two, let's say it's set it equal to, uh, I don't know, hello, hola. And maybe, salut. So let's now, uh, oops, I forgot to print yeah, the, the condition out. Now let's try, for example, to print out uh, slice one equals equals slice two. Let's see what the Go compiler will tell us. As you can see, the Go compiler will throw an error. It will say embedded operation, slice one equals equals slice two. Slice can only be compared to nil. What this means is that you can use the direct comparison operator just to check if a slice is uh, nil, meaning that if it's basically uh, null in other languages, you would say. Uh, so how can we so how can we actually compare slices between each other and get uh, actually uh, interesting results? Meaning that basically have a way to check if all the elements inside of slice are the same. And well, so in order to do this, we will use the slices package. And notice and this is very important that in order to use this uh, this package, you will have to have at least uh, you have to have the new newest uh, Go version that is Go point one point twenty one point four. If not, I will show another way to compare slices in Golang. Uh, without the slices package because you can actually use another package that's called reflect to do the same thing but now let's see how we can first use the slices package and in the slices package you have this function which is called equal and so we can use this uh, this equal as follows uh, so we will print it the syntax is the following first of all we will see slices which is the package uh, to which this equal uh, function is, is located in then we will say equal and then we will pass in the two slices that we want to compare. In this case, slice one and slice two. Let's see what we get as a uh, output. And we get false. Why? Because these slices are not the same. Um, but now let's try and print out uh, slices dot equal slice one and then the following slice. So hello and then hi, for example. Let's see what we get. Oh, I forgot something, let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot a, a brace at the end. As you can see, we get true because the two slices are actually equal, as you can see. And this package also has a lot of other uh, really uh, useful functions. 
that you can use when working with slices. For example, let's declare a new slice, this time of integers maybe, and let's set it equal maybe to 11, 22, then 55, then 66, then 77. Then you can uh, have a function in the slices uh, package to determine where is the first occurrence of an element. And this is the index function. So, and the way in which you use it is just by saying uh, slices, oops, um, slices dot index then you uh, basically insert the slice uh, variable that you want to check then you insert the slice that over which you want to find the element and then you insert the value so for example let's say that we want to find the first occurrence uh, the first index occurrence of the value 55 let's print it out to the console As you can see, we get two because 55 is located at the first time at the position two, index two. Uh, of course, you need to remember that we start counting from zero. Uh, not only that, but the packet, but the slices package also has a function called insert to insert a value inside the slice at a, uh, at a, uh, at a specific index. And the way in which we do that is the following. So, of course, here notice that just like with the append function, you need to you need to reassign the, uh, the variable to the value that you are basically uh, getting as, as a return. As an output from the insert function and uh, actually slice is equal to slices dot insert then here you will put the slice to which you want to insert the value then uh, you will put the uh, index at which you want to insert it so let's suppose that we want to insert at um, position 2 the value 33 because it's actually missing so 33 and 44 are missing so we will just put uh, position 2 then we will insert the value that uh, the values that we want to insert in this case uh, let's put 33 and 44 because here you can insert as many values as you want. Uh, it will just tell you from which position you will start inserting them. So now let's try to print out again the slice. Let's see what we get. As you can see, we get the um, slice of multiples of 11 up to 77, as expected. Also, another interesting uh, fun function of the um, of the slices package is um, the is sorted function. In fact, you can print out if a slice is sorted. Actually, a slice is not is sorted. Let's try to print out our slice variable. Let's see what we get. We should get true because it is sorted. But now let's try to insert a value that is, um, for example, I don't know, 55 here again. You get that it's not sorted. In fact, you get false. So this is basically, um, these are the most important functions of the slices uh, package. You can check all the other ones in the documentation. You can just look it up on the Go documentation. There's actually also other functions that allow you to sort um, slices. Uh, there's, there's functions that allow you to search for values using binary search on sorted um, slices. But uh, in this video, we've just seen the basics and you can look these other things up on uh, the documentation and it's really well written so you will understand it. So now, as promised, we will see another way to uh, compare slices without the newest Go version and that is using the reflect package. So let's again declare a slice, uh, example of integers. Um, we, won't be, we won't be fancy this time, just one, two, three, four. Now, if we type print out reflect dot deep equal then slice and then for example another slice uh, of integers two three four let's see a brace so as you can see we have two because the two are equal now if we try and for example change it maybe we increase this value we get false because they're not true and so this is how you compare slices using both the um Slices package and the re uh, the reflect package. And now, as a last thing, we will and as a last thing, we will see how how slices work when reassigning them to other values and changing the values we've assigned them to. So one of the important things that you have to keep in mind is that slices when you when you have a slice variable. So for example, slice equals a slice of integers um, one five one four minus three five for example. Well, then this slice variable will behave, we could say, in a weird way when we reassign it to another variable. So let's create another slice variable, uh, a slice of integers. And let's, uh, actually, let's call, it, let's call it slice2. And then let's set slice2 equal to slice. Now let's try to change slice2 at an index, for example, and let's set the first uh, element to 55. Now let's try to print out slice1. 
so slice the original variable let's see what we have as you can see we also modified the initial value and so this is rather bizarre maybe if you have never programmed before you say why why did we modify this uh, original value if we set it equal to if we basically just assign the value of this to another variable we should have just modified slice 2 well the reason why this happens is because slice is a reference type we could say or more precisely slice is actually a pointer to a location in memory being a pointer to a location in memory in particular to the first one okay so the, to this one in memory uh, then when we assign it to another variable, we're actually assigning to this other variable the same position in memory. So when we modify that, we then also modify this. So in order to uh, store inside of slice2 the values of the slice slice, we need to use another function. And this is the function uh, copy. So instead of saying slice2 is equal to slice, we will say, um, so let's remove the uh, lines above then in order to do that first of all we need to use the make function to redeclare uh, to redeclare the slice to um, slice variable we will use the make function set it equal to a slice of integers of length equal to the length of the first slice then it will copy the content of slice inside slice 2 so uh, actually you need to put the destination first and then the source and now let's try to modify slice 2 so the first index, for example, is equal to 55 again as before. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the first, uh, the values of the first slice are not changed. But the, val the values of the second slice, which are all equal to slice, um, were then changed. The first one got set up to 55 and the, the other one remained the same. So the behavior of slices with respect to this, uh, we could say, reassignment is very different from the behavior of arrays. So as an exercise, you can try and uh, create an array and then assign the value of that array to a new variable and once have, you have done that uh, then change the new variable and print both of them out so you will see that basically the new uh, variable that we have created changing that will not change the original array this is why this is because when you uh, reassign the value of this new array to the value of the old array, the value of the original arrays actually just got copied inside the uh, new array. In contrary to what happens with slices, where you actually save the position in memory of the first element. So with this said, I think we have said enough in this video, and in the next one, we will look at for loops.